أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعلم آدم الأسماء كلها and he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam the names and attributes of everything all of them all the attributes and good names so we will inshallah start from here so just a preamble because we are going to see a lot of patterns today and uh, just to uh, just to encourage everybody that human is the best pattern recognition machine ever ever known to humans so we are all the one human computing models are now breaking down on the face of non one human models which are following this uh brain inspired computing and the the, the the total research focus of computing is now geared towards brain inspired computing because brain style computing recognizes very complex pattern on a very large scale of data and uh, we are going to inshallah embark on a little journey to see that how uh, this mashallah arabic is such a beautiful language and it's a living language that grows as the human knowledge grows so but the coolest part is that that 99.5% of the vocabulary is based on three letter stem or root words and we we usually call them trilateral roots um we are looking into to see how to refer or or to uh use the hanswer dictionary uh it is it is uh, available uh on amazon for about 30 to 40 dollars depending upon what condition you're you're buying for and uh, it's a wonderful piece of work and as you know that uh no book or no work is error free except for Quran and Kareem. so expect some mistakes from here and there, here and there but it's not uh it's it's a still a perfect almost like almost perfect collection of the information that you can get for english uh, for arabic to english so i will just straight jump to the that understanding the entries the all the entries uh in typical arabic dictionaries are arranged in the form of a, in the form of root letters so if you are trying to uh if you try to find out some word uh, straight out of quran the way it appears you would not be able to find it in the dictionary so you will just inshallah learn that how actually how to uh, look for look at a word and then stay for a second and then then activate your human superpower to recognize the pattern within it and then once you get those trilateral root pattern in there, you can refer to the dictionary. Inshallah, we are going to learn it during this uh, little session. Uh, the base entries are given in the form of a Mavi, the base letter of the Mavi, and the Mavi is for the third person singular. So given a verb is in, in a perfect form. Perfect form means Mavi. And it's a base stem for third person singular, and it comes with its transliteration so that you know exactly how to pronounce that trilateral root itself. So like katiba, uh, salima, baraba, nasara. So the, the, there's, a, there's the English translation you, you will see in there. So, so is followed by a little vowel, which, which actually signifies the, how the imperfect or the mudare will be con constructed out of it. And followed by some meaning, the masadir, I mean, within the bracket parentheses, there are, uh, there are masader or the origin words that are there. We are going to look into that in more detail. And then come some derived stem scales from two to uh, ten, depending upon which scale exists for a particular word. So you have to understand that not all the scales exist for every word. So uh, the scale that exists for a particular X entry or a word will only show up in that listing. Um, some essential synonym uh, definitions are separated by the commas, and uh, semicolons make 
the beginning of a different definition or semantic range, because some Arabic words have actually, uh, same word would mean different, altogether different in certain conversations, so they are separated by semicolons. Um, some foreign words are listed straight after the, in alphabetical order, once the main entry is finished. Uh, within the entry, some dash, a long dash, are sometimes occur to actually form a, of a plural or verbal noun. So it just shows that what kind of a noun that exists, more nouns. Uh, following the main entry, we start seeing there are some explanation of Masada. They, they go in the order of scale one and then uh, the scale one related words and then explanation of different mafadir and then uh, after the explanation of different mafadir then comes start coming the exit particle which we call it ismul file or then comes ismul mafud we are going to just inshallah look into this thing a little more uh, okay so before we go in more detail uh, i I want to let you know that I, I sent out the link for this slide deck that I'm using and presenting. Uh, I copied the whole uh, first uh, few pages out of the hands there. I would just uh, uh, so mark this, this page in your hands there dictionary all the way to the, uh, this page. So you would have this, these are I mean, these are some prior reading. If you have some time, some time, just open and flip over these pages, and they are really helpful. Uh, especially there are some entries, but we are going to just look into this before we dive deep into this this world of uh, surf. We uh, I just want to remind myself and everybody that when there isn't, the isn't can have some attached pronouns towards the end of it. So these are the these are the attached pronouns that appear to be uh, or come as modafile. And in case of verbs, there are some suffixes that we see that are that also signifies as a file. So these are some listed here. So I just put it for quick references. All nouns, pretty much all nouns, usually have their jamu, their monas their uh, masanna means dual form, their plural. So this this chart actually refers or uh, gives a quick uh, rub of different categories of uh, asma. This is uh, our favorite chart that actually lists the, the 10 scales of verbs. And followed by this chart is the, ex the brief explanation of each scale. So, uh, we, I mean, if there will be some question, we'll inshallah come back and refer these things. So just to let you know that only uh, what is important to understand in this whole thing, uh, this chart is gives you the patterns or the 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 abrab that a fail can have may have, and the based on dictionaries. Some of what that, that exists, you can actually use these patterns to generate this thing. So, this entire chart, there are one thing that, two things that we need to know here. One thing is that in Arabic, some alum or the part of knowledge that we uh, we learn is called sama'i. Sama'i means what you have learned. And sama'i, part of knowledge here is that then uh, what is going to be the haraka on the ayn kalima of a triliteral root? So we, we know that Arabic, Arabic is like all, uh, triliteral, all about triliteral roots. So this part of this chart, this, this fa'ala, fa'ala, this, this one, this is, these fa'ala, fa'ulu, fa'ula, and fa'ila, we have to understand that fa'ula and fa'ila, this is a fake word. This is just pattern. This is not real pattern. But some words do actually take, the ayin kalima do take the dhamma or taqsa. So in, in real fa'ala, fa'ala is the only ayin takes fatha. 
but other words ion telemetry can take uh, different decretic signs here, the harata. And that comes from dictionary, and this part of knowledge is summary. So, Mobi. So, what comes from Mavi to Mudare, that is also defined. So, Ain Kalima from Mavi to Mudare can, Ain can have Fatha, Tasra, or Dhamma in Mavi. And in Mudare, Fatha can go to all three possible Fatha, Tasra, or Dhamma. But Kasra could take only Fatha or Kasra, and Dhamma would always go to Dhamma. And what, uh, what is, how we are going to choose this thing? That comes from the dictionary itself. So that is what I wanted to emphasize here. And this part of the chart here is, that comes the El Samai. So this is the, this combination, this combination is Samai. So the rest of this part, except- uh, Question? Yes. So what was the definition of Sama'i again? Okay, Sama'i comes for Sami'a Yasma'u, which means listening. And this part of the knowledge is transferred to us through listening, like the ancient Arabs listened from their forefathers, the angels listened from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam listened from angels, and, and then Sahaba learned from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then so on and so forth. This knowledge has been transferred by listening. So there is no mathematics or algorithm behind it. So this is a, this is a sama'i knowledge. And I have to just say that this part, Masdaf, which is origin, is also a part of Sama'i that also comes from dictionary or by, by the uh, generation over generation that this knowledge has been transferred. Anything else you see on this chart is fixed and it's called Hesabi. Hesabi means mathematics. It's all Hisabi. So, Hisabi means it's all, everything else on the chart is a pattern that would always be exactly the same. All you just have to do is just replace Fa'ayn and Lam with whatever the trilateral root that comes with that word, and you get the exact word. We are going to inshallah see it in a minute. So, We'll inshallah start from here. Uh, on this, the next chart, every one of the scales is, has a little brief explanation. So I will just, so for example, I will just try to just go over to the scale four. So we know that the scale four is the Babul as Allah. So if you look at this, uh, the example here, it tells you that it's uh, intransitive to transitive. That means uh, if, if it is a uh, fail lazim, it makes it fail mutaaddi. So that means there would always be a muful bihi. It will always require that. So jalasu means I, I sat. It does not require an object because I sat. Sitting does not require an object. So see, I jalasu fis safa. Al-Ula, Al-Awali, so I sat first in the first row, wa ad lastu, ad lastu tafla bidanibi, and I seated the child beside me. So notice this thing that the jalasa is the base root word, and it becomes ajlasa, that means to make somebody sit, make somebody sit. So this actually gives you a little bit of a flavor that how these scales actually change the meaning of a given word. But in terms of dictionary, sometimes these words actually 
these, these scale actually bring it, bring us all together different meanings. I think uh, uh, from here, I will just quickly hop onto the, our favorite chart that actually tells us how to conjugate a given verb, base verb, to its uh, the 14 different forms. So I hope that everybody's comfortable with these things. And this, these charts are like our handy references and tell us that how we conjugate a given amadi or mudare. Uh, mudare is a little more involved because madi does not have moods. So uh, you remember that mudare can be marfu, mansub, and majzum. And in this, um, the scope of this meeting or review, we are not going to go fo and focus on that how a mudare becomes mansub or majzum. That is uh, a separate discussion, but the focus of this thing is that given the root word, how to actually construct mudare, mudare marfu, then mudare mansub and mudare majzum. And let me just give you a good, a glad tiding here that everything on this chart is all hisabi. Fixed patterns, nothing changes. All you have to do is just replace ain, fa, ain, lam, and then you get the word. So, if we have yaf alu, so if you notice the thing in ain kalima has a tilde on it, and why we are using tilde is that this is this can take any of the dictative signs like tasra fatsal dhamma. So that is noted. It's it's given in the note um, in, in a in a footnote. Okay, now we actually so a typical. Uh, entry of uh, dictionary, we, we chose a salima uh, because Islam actually is a derived word out of this thing as an example that we are going to just drill and drill in the, during this time. So we, inshallah, look here. So I, on the left side, I, I just uh, put some uh, statistics of this word and then dab about the thing. And this, the entries would look like this. Seen, and you can see that the transliteration appears. We are going to just see that on the next page. Here. And this goes on and on. So there you go. Now I'm just showing you here that what we get in this century. On the left side is the base three-letter three -letter word that is salima or the triliteral root. And triliteral root is usually the mali for third person singular. So it is it is usually for third person singular, but you would be you would be wondering that uh, how do you know that uh, what is going to be the haraka on seen or meme or lam? We just learned that the fa kalima and lam kalima would always take fatha. Always take fatha. So Theme and meme in this case would be fatha. So the only only confusing part is, or the only missing missing piece of the puzzle is, what is going to be on the lamb kalima? That would come from the transliteration that is given up here. So, so this part, this this one is the transliteration that gives you that what is how you are going to pronounce the the base, Madi, third person singular would be pronounced as Salima. Okay? Now, given that, how do we, now once we have this thing, we can just go back and conjugate Salima, Salima, Salimu, Salimat, Salimata, Salim, Salimna, Salim, Salimta, Salimtum, Salimtuma, Salimtum, and so on and so forth. This is like our regular mantra. And the next thing is that how do we convert the Salima to Mudare? And what comes here, right after this entry, you get a little A here. For different words, this A can be, it could be, a, 
could be you or could be I. A for Fatha, U for Bama, and I for Kefra. So if you see this little little letter here is A, that means the Ain Kalima in Mudare would take a Fatha. So now it is becomes the uh, now the pieces of puzzles are getting together, it becomes yes la mu. Yes la mu. We know that the fa kalima would always take a sakoon and they're going to be a symbol of mudari, mudari at the beginning. That is ya, which is taking a fatha, and the the lam kalima is taking gamma. So we are done here. So madi to mudari, we are done. Now comes the, what is, what goes in these parentheses? Right after the first entry comes the, the, the base masdar or the origin, the original word that is, that is the noun related to this particular entry. Historically, people believe that all the words are derived out of the masada. Masada means origin or original word. So masdar means origin. And but I mean in these dictionaries the they are organized based on the uh, triliteral root, the masdar appears right in these parentheses. And then in this particular case you can say that salama and salam. These are the two mas masadir that uh, uh, a given root letter can have more than one masadir. So that is why we say that if I don't use the map that it says Mafada means there more than I've used the Jammu uh, here. And these Mafadas are not usually explained right over here. They are they are explained after the entry, but they are listed here so that you know that what Mafdar exists for this thing. And Mafdar uh, may have different patterns, most of them, so let me just go back and just zoom on here. So here, the, the three masadir are listed, like fa'alun, fu'ulun, and fi'alun tun. So these are the, but they are uh, known to be like about 30, 33 to 37 different patterns of masadir could be there, and this is a sama'i ilm that we just learned. It is a learned knowledge. It is listened and learned knowledge. So that is why it is documented within the the dictionary itself. So the two things that the, the entry gives you right in the beginning is the one that how the madi is going to be converted to mubare, or what is the ayin kalima is going to take. And so question. Yes. Please. So at the beginning it had seen la meme. Is that the triliteral root or the triliteral root is in the parenthesis that you call masadir? No, no, no. The triliteral root is the salima. The seen la meme is the triliteral okay. root. That is the triliteral root and these are the three letters you're going to take. So in this particular case, I mean if you want to use them, so here, in in this particular case, seen is our fa kalima, lam is our ain kalima, and mean is our lam kalima. Okay, in that case, I'm not sure what the parenthesis words mean. Parenthesis words means these are the masadir or the nouns related to this triliteral root. These are the base nouns nouns of those words. So salima, noun salama, and this salama is, means to be safe or sound. So the, the, since it's a verb, it's always a verb that is being defined. You can imagine that the masdar is actually a noun, which, is, which would not have an action in it, and that's going to appear, and if we just go a little jump ahead of it, and once this entry is finished, the, the first root word is salama, and salam is going to be, look here. Salam is defined at the end, end of the entry, which means soundness, unimpaired, unimpairedness. 
So that is the muscle of this word. That is the, the like, um, if you recall that we've learned that kharaja means exit, but khuruj is its muslar means which means the the place where you can exit. Make sense? Did I answer the question? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay, so next thing in this one is that within that definition, when you see a semicolon, the definition is different semantic range. So you will start seeing a different meaning of the same word that may exist in certain connotations. Then comes that uh, in parentheses here, if you notice the same thing, man is from. So it means, uh, min, it means from. So these, this is the, the words that, that are listed, which are the uh, prepositions within the parentheses that say the preposition used for something or someone. They are listed here. Ha means, so we will say salamata ha means it is for somebody or li salama or ila salam. So these are like the words which, which we are going to use for something or someone. And these are the, prep, the appropriate prepositions that you can use with this particular word. And you cannot just go on using all other prepositions. These are the right or appropriate. You know, like it is like very pretty common that even in English, sometimes we get confused that are we going to say sit in the sofa or say sit on the sofa? So what is the right preposition for that? Or sitting on the chair or sitting at the chair? So what, so this is, this is exactly the same things that they're we here trying to get rid of that confusion that which preposition we are going to use in a given uh, given word. Then comes this little thingy, uh, this this one here, and this actually tells that another scale of this verb has started here. The that means that. All the meanings or the meanings that we are giving here, or the translation you are getting here, they are not related to salima yaslamu. They are, they are, they belong to salama yusallimu. So this two means salama yusallimu, and you know that this is a derived word, scale to word, and it is totally hisabi. So dictionary does not actually write it. It expects that. You are a wonderful pattern recognizer and pattern generator machine. You can actually generate your pattern yourself. So this this too means that here onward we are talking about the scale two meaning of the same trilateral root. If you see this uh, uh, very hard stroke, this is a little more prominent for here. So like this one. This one means that here onward, we are going to see some phrase, phrases, idioms, or sentences which illustrate the phrase, the, the uh, phraseology and syntactic use of this thing. So see this, salam amraha ala Allah. So this is to commit one's cause to God. Now, we go on, and when we see this thing, this this entry here, that means now here onward the scale three has started, and Salima uh, fortunately has the third scale three as well, and the answer the, all the meanings will be related to Salama Yusalimu. So the all the words Salama Yusalimu means to keep the peace, to make one's peace, make up. With something, so there's a ha in here. That is a preposition, appropriate preposition to use with the salama ha. So that is or salama hu. So here we are going to use uh, the, the scale four starts here, which is derived scale four and as lama yus limu. So this is the word. This the meaning is aslama. These are like two forsake 
leave, desert, give up, betray. To let, so you see that now with the semicolon, to let sink, to drop. So this is a different meaning, which is not quite related to leave or desert. So I just went on trying to get, this is a scale five. That will be tasallama, yatasallamu. And then comes the scale six and scale eight. And this particular word does not have scale seven or scale nine. So you stay straight, go and see that scale 10 shows up. So here the main entry finishes. And we start seeing the masadir. Uh, the first word that you usually see is the masda for the, the scale one, which is salam. Salam means peace. Then comes silm. And it's, it has a masculine and feminine. And it's called religion of Islam. Question? Yes. So, you know, in some places, in parentheses, it's, uh, it shows a ha and then a s dot th yes. or a lam or al to s dot th. How to, how to interpret that? Okay. So, when you say this one, let me just see here. So, this one, ha is an attached pronoun. So, when you say uh, this when you are going to use this word, it's going to use a, a ha for something means that it it can be to something. So you know that attached pronoun. Let me just go back and show you that uh, how so something s e h means something. And let me just go back and uh, show you where we had more than one of these examples here. And this case we have ha something, li or ila to someone. That's who means someone. So this is mm. ha. Now let me just go even further back and remind you the attached pronoun that we learned here. If you notice here, this is the damir for the hua. Then huma, whom. So these are, so it is, it is telling that you can use these Bamir Mutasil for the, for some things. And when it comes to someone, you are going to use these Harpuja, Li or Ila for someone, to someone. Did I answer the question? Oh, uh, yes, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so. We come back here. So after the masadir, then you start seeing some related words. See that sullam, which is a plural, whose plural is salam, salalim. So the meaning of the letter. It's a very strange thing that now what the word salima has to do with letter. But this is the related word that is used in this meaning. So. We have to understand that a given trilateral root could have a very, very diversified masadir, a very, very diversified derived letter, a derived meaning. So we should not just say that, oh, I, I learned that in the dictionary, I checked it, it means uh, to, to give up. Now you're trying to just try to derive all the meanings out of the give up, no. We have to refer that sometimes some of the masadir means absolutely different. So we have to refer to the dictionary and then make sure that in that particular form or pattern means what. Sometimes different scales mean very, very different meanings as well. So dictionary is a very important resource to actually count on, but the important thing is how to refer it. You always have to extract the file little root and then refer it. So then comes down some related words. After the related words are finished, the first thing that you see is the masdar for the 
scale two and then further in the other scale. So this is the clean, is it for the scale two? And then comes the scale four master, which is Islam. Here. And this means submission, reconciliation, and of course, the religion of Islam. After these masadir are done, the, the more important thing, and every masadir is followed by some related words to that particular field, the more important thing is that comes the active particle. Active particle means the small file. The doer of the same action that we have been learning about. So it's that comes silent. So who is silent? The word who, the person who does the salima. We say that salima yaslamu, salim does salima. So salim is the doer of that action. So if it is daraba means fitting, darab is going to be the one who is the who is the person who does. So, Dharib, Dharaba, Moduru. So, then comes the, is the passive particle, which is Muslim, which is the Maful, Ismul Maful, or the recipient of the action. So, the doer of the action is active particle. The recipient of the action, action is the passive particle. They are listed towards them. So this, this is how the entries are organized. Uh, one more thing that I did not find in Islam, the Salima Yaslamu, so I just picked up this word Kafara Yasiru. It has two ways or two, absolutely two different uh, syntactic ranges and they are and different ways there. Kafara Yaksiru is a combination that says to cover, to hide. Then it starts with a very long dash occurring within the section indicates that the following form of the plural of a plural of a ver, or of a verb noun, a verbal noun, which is verbal noun means masdar, or in some sentences the introduction of the new vowel sound of the main entry. So this is like another word started here, which is kafara yakfuru, which means to be Irreligious or infidel, kafir. So this this is like important to know that sometimes this happens. That watch out if we have this a long dash. That means just the same phyllical root has two different uh, declensions. So it may may come in different directions. This thing. So here are some points and to remember and caveat. Every noun, every noun, so we already see, we have already seen, let me just go back and just remind ourselves here that once we, once we establish that there is a scale exists for a particular entry, so uh, we were saying that once we have established that there is going to be a fail, madi, we know that how to convert it to mudare, and uh, we will just quickly look at how we convert a mudare to amar, the, that is imperative. And this is all hisabi. You just follow that exact hisab to get there. So in that, there's a madi mathul, which is like passive voice. It's just like we have active voice and passive voice. In English, we have a passive voice, madi and mudare. It's called majhul, al majhul. So here in the top. It says majhul. So that is also hisabi. You will just use, follow the six. And for each entry of the verb, there comes some ismul file or active particle here in the green. And the blue one is ismul masmaful. And then yellow one is ismul makan or ismul zaman. So that means we, we, for every scale that exists, there could be four different, there could be masdar. There could be file, masul, and ismul zaman or makan. And they would follow the exact the same pattern. Now we go back to where we left off, where we were looking here. So for every noun, there could be some derived forms. Every noun can, would, as it stands, will be singular. It will have its dual, and it would, it would have its plural. 
On the plural, we, I mean, there's a subject, there's a lesson that we learned that Jamo Salim and Jamo Taksir, that means that broken plural or the sound plural, depending upon whichever you get for a particular word, that also comes from dictionary as well. So, so there's the singular, dual, plural. Then for every one of them, singular, dual, and plural, plural there will be masculine and there will be a feminine form. And based on, because we know that nouns would decline, they would have a masu, mansub, and majroor form. And you, now you can just do some cross product of the, the singular masculine mansub, singular dual marfu, singular dual majroor. So you can just cross, do a cross product on each of these. Given a word, there could be some prefixes, which could be halfujar could be lamut tafid, and there are some, some other words or letters that can be prefixed to a noun. So the word as it stands in Quran might not appear to be just a single word that, oh, this, this is the word I am expected to see as a masdar or a file or a fool in dictionary. You might have to strip out some prefixes out of that. And then similarly, you might have to Strip out some postfixes, which can be dami mutasil as a mudafilahi of that particular noun, and so are some infixes in case of jama takfir. Some words actually show up, some letters show up in the middle of the word itself. So we know that that palibun so labun. So you see that in after ta and lam, alif comes as to make it plural. So the whole, the, the soundness of the word, which is fa, lam, bi, ba, fa, lam, ba, actually gets broken by alif in there. So it's like infix letter in there. So watch out for that. So these are the some caveats here. Uh, for the verbs, every verb has madi, mudare, and amar. Then, all of them can conjugate for 14 different, all Madi and Mudare can conjugate for 14 forms. Amar would conjugate for six. And uh, then there could be post prefixes, could be Harfun Nasbin, could be Harfun Tajbal, could be Lamu Salil, and could be Harfun Jazin. Uh, so these are the some words. So I see that there's a it's a typo here, it's, it is supposed to be et cetera. So, could, and similarly, a verb can have postfixes which can appear as an attached pronoun of maful dehi. So, when you're trying to look for it in a dictionary, you better strip out the prefixes and postfixes because before we start actually looking in there or referring the dictionary. And after this lecture, uh, we have to remember this thing that the identification of the uh, pattern is the, the key or the path to glory. That we have to learn how to identify the trilateral group in a given Quranic word. And the life becomes even more difficult when we are dealing with a weak words, the fellow mortal. And these are the words which involve any of the letter vow or ja as one of their trilateral rules, radicals. And that is, uh, that requires a special rules of transformation. The, the good news is that those rules are also fixed and can be coded in a program and can be memorized as a mathematical formula and you can go on for this year. So, I did a little exercise on to estimate just the word Salima, how many unique derived words can be generated out of word Salima. So if you guys, uh, if you remember that for Mali, we have 13, 14 forms, right? In the 14 forms, the second person masculine dual is same as the second person feminine dual. For if you remember that, 
both of them are Tuma Tuma. So I took that one out because that makes it, that is not a unique word. So written down Arabic, it would not form a unique word, although it's going to be, make it a unique meaning, but not a unique word. Similarly, in Mudare, there are some words, some of the words which are used for more than one conjugation. So I just made a more conservative guess. There will be smarfu form of mudare will bring in 11 unique words. And when we go from marfu to mansu, uh, we get nine more words. And from majum, we get four more words. So mudare makes total of 24. And similarly for mudare, madi and mudare, if we make them their festivals or majhul, they will be 13 and 24 for each of those. And amar will be six, because we know that the, the amar is imperative or the command word, which are used for the second person. And second person can be only six forms, you singular, masculine, you dual masculine, you more than two uh, masculine, and the same for the feminine, the six of them. The so total of 80, uh, words for every scale of a given word. So now in case of Salima, we had eight different scales. And if we just multiply this, it makes 640 base words, base words. And now if we just start multiplying them with the 14 different possible Mapulbi attached pronouns, to this, it makes it 8,960 words from Selena. And uh, each scale yields uh, some nouns, and we learned that Masdat could be one, file could be one, Mafool could be one, and it was like the man or Makam could be one. And each of them would have singular masculine, masculine noun, then dual masculine noun, and the plural masculine, and singular feminine, and each of them are going to have the nominative, and, uh, genitive, and accusative forms. And uh, for the dual, we know that uh, the accusative and genitive forms are the same. Uh, we had a chart back there that actually showed that. So totaling 14. And estimated saliva nouns for, for, for eight scales, we are, we're talking about 112 now. And then we multiply each of them, this can be attached with the mudafilahi pronoun, attached pronouns, Rami uh, Motasil, 14 of those, and that makes 1,568 nouns. This makes just the base entries of the Salim. And just imagine that you can actually have multiple of prefixes for temporal or emphatic sense. Like you can add a sta to a mudare to make it like a to make it like a near future. And there could be a lamotali that actually makes it much zoom. So and it could be a lot of prefixes and or that will make uh, exponential explosion of the cell. If you don't believe it, here I actually went on crazy and then started generating these using computer. The salima, yasnimu, these are the words of the scale one. So I would just stop on one of them at, at a time and then just go on salima two, scale two. This is salama, yes, you salimu. So, and then See, Salama, Salamu, Salamat, scale three, Salama, Yusalimu, and then we conjugate it for active-wise, passive-wise, 14 forms. This is Aslama, Yusalimu. Then comes Tasalama, Yastasalamu. Yes, they're like some tongue twisters. So, so on and so forth. This is the, this, and this is the scale 10. Scale 10 has some additional letters in there. You see that size showing up in there. 
On this slide, I have this Quranic corpus. This is a wonderful, these are like some wonderful resources that I frequently use to refer when I read Quran and I come across a word that I try to understand that how this is related to some other word, the corpus Quran, and I have actually put them in some sort of a very uh, um, meditated order that based on their usefulness. So they are really useful. And uh, the first one is the, the corpus. The second one is the, it's like a, the purest digital version of Quran available online. And it, the Sandeeps also give you all the translations in digital form and in, in so like a multiple of different languages and multiple translators like from Bengali to English to, to, to Russian to any other language, even Chinese out there. So this conjugator, the online conjugators, I, I, this Bekel.b is that uh, Arabic con, Acon, it has also a, a, a Apple app, which is not really good at this point, so I do not recommend buying that app but he's trying to sell it. Online version also pretty good for now, so you can just use that one. Uh, this uh, Verbix is also a very good resource to do the conjugation. Now that we have the computer, we do not have to go on crazy, try to learn every single pattern of this conjugation. We can actually generate that. So that's pretty much it, what I wanted to say. Uh, before I finish, I have some more examples that we can take quick for the quick look. Sabara, Baasa, Kataba, Yakabu, Shatara. And you know, this is for example to uh, to do some exercise that uh, how these words are seen at. This is again, let me just see that if we can look here. Shakara, this little U here is actually telling us that it's going to be Yashkuru. Shakara, Yashkuru. This little let me just highlight this one. This U is telling us that Kaf is going to take Obama when we are going to take it, make it a Mudare. Uh, as this, this list finishes, there is some basic transformation rules, slides are attached, and we have already discussed this thing that how uh, Madi to Mudare transformation happens. This is listed here. This is different Bab, and there, how there are this. Uh, converting. Uh, this is uh, explaining what is masdar and what is uh, different patterns of masdar can be. There, this, this slide actually lists six patterns of masdar. And this like fa'ulun, fa'alun, and fa'alun, fi'lun, fu'lun, and fi'alatun. So these different words. And then this is the slide that actually tells, I think, I, I kept it for the very end, that is that tells you that how in, uh, Amar is formed out of uh, an entry. And the transformation it happens like this. Um, this lists a certain uh, way. I like to go like this, that you take the Majzoom version of Mudariya, and then you drop the Alamatul Mudariya. So this makes it four steps. If you uh, try to uh, skip uh, or qu quickly go, uh, make it like a three-step move. So because we already have those charts where they are listed as a matu, mansub, and majru, uh, majru, uh, the mudare. So take the mudare majzum and drop the alamatul mudare, which is which could be ya, could could be ta, or could be. Uh, in, in, in this particular, it's going to be mostly ta because you will be dealing with the, the second person. So drop the ta, uh, which is alamatul mudare, and then add an alif if it requires, if, you, if you're left with a, the, the beginning word as with the, with the sakoon. Put a hamzatul wasl in the beginning, and what is going to be the decretic sign on the hamzatul wasl that would be determined by the Ayn Kalima. If Ayn Kalima had a Fatha, it will take Khatra. 
If it has a Kasra, it will have Kasra, and if it has Zamma, it will take Zamma. So in, for the base Amr, base implementation of Amr, Hamratul uh, Wasl never takes Fatha. It will be always be Kasra or Zamma. So that is the conversion of Amr. So that is where we actually stop. So this deck, I sent uh, this uh, link to this deck for your uh, uh, reference. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to email it to me. My email address is here. And uh, if you have any question regarding the whole thing, uh, please you can unmute yourself and then ask it right now. 